Alright, let's talk about CubeCraft. It's the second most popular featured server on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and it's one of the more popular and well-known servers on Minecraft Java Edition. In this video, I'm gonna talk about CubeCraft and my experiences with the server. I know that in the past, I haven't said the most favorable things about CubeCraft, and while I do think some of those criticisms are still valid, I have given the server more of a shot recently, and I've changed some of my opinions towards it. I'll discuss all of this and more in the video, so be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and enjoy! Enjoy! So I guess I'll preface all of this by saying that I'm a guy who makes primarily Hive content. I am aware that, apart from the larger creators, the Cubecraft and Hive communities don't really mix that much. From what I and others have seen, the communities just kind of stick to themselves. What I'm trying to say here is that this video is from a Hive player's perspective, and there's gonna be some bias as I am a Hive player and content creator. Either way, let's jump into the video by discussing some of the main criticisms that I have of the server. My first one is the fact that they only have European servers. This is usually my go-to response when someone asks why I don't play Cubecraft that frequently, and it's because when I, as a guy from the United States, play on Cubecraft, I get at least 100 ping. Now I know that some might say that 100 ping in Minecraft doesn't really matter at all, but if you had two players of the same skill level but one of them had 20 ping while the other had 100 ping, who would win that fight? It's very obviously going to be the guy with lower ping just because his game registers with the server quicker than the guy with higher ping. Now in a perfect world, the logical solution would just be like, yo, Cubecraft, make North American and Asian servers so that people all around the world can have an enjoyable experience on the server. But obviously we don't live in a perfect world, and the solution isn't that simple. I have been told that Cubecraft spent quite a lot of money to upgrade their servers when PlayStation players were granted access to Minecraft featured servers. One can safely assume that servers like Cubecraft have a budget, and that they probably spent a decent chunk of it on upgrading their servers for PS4 players. One can also assume that getting servers in a location that isn't where the company is based is also probably a difficult task. For those of you that didn't know, Cubecraft is based in the UK, by the way. Now, I know that some might ask, well, if the Hive and Galaxite can have servers in multiple regions, why can't Cubecraft? It certainly does look like there is enough demand for their game modes just by looking at how many players are playing each game, but again, that just kind of comes back to the budget thing and whether the servers want to invest in having servers in multiple regions. A common counter-argument is that if enough players are already playing these game modes with just one server region, what's the point in upgrading? And to be quite honest, that is is pretty hard to refute. Still, as a North American region player, I would love to see North American servers just so my experience is a little bit more playable. Alright, now let's move on to the second main criticism I have on Cubecraft, which is the knockback on the server. My largest complaint about it is the fact that it doesn't seem consistent at all. Like, sometimes you can be fighting people, and it seems like you both have anti-KB just because knockback doesn't seem to exist in the fight. But then at random intervals, you'll sometimes get sent fly for seemingly no reason at all. Now, apparently the scent flying thing is a result of Cubecraft Bedrock trying to model Cubecraft Java's knockback. Now on Java, crits and W tapping and a whole lot of things determine how much knockback you'll actually take, but the Bedrock adaptation of this system doesn't seem to work consistently. You'll sometimes lose fights just because knockback doesn't exist and you can't get a combo, even if it was a fight that you were supposed to win. And this is kind of what I don't like about Cubecraft PvP, it it just boils down to whoever gets the first hit wins the fight. It removes a lot of skill from the PvP on the server. This also gives what I would assume is an unintended advantage to mobile and controller players. They don't have to focus as much on the movement aspect of PvP as much as just hitting the opponent as much as possible. And I guess that this is a good thing because PvP is a little bit more balanced between the platforms, but also, like I said earlier, it removes a lot of skill from PvP. And as a somewhat competitive and sort of sweaty player, it makes it less fun to play. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all of the big criticisms I have about Cubecraft, and now I think it's time to move on and talk about some of the things that I actually really like about Cubecraft. One of them is the fact that pretty much everything on the server just works. Apart from the knockback being kind of broken and inconsistent, everything else on the server seems pretty well put together. The same cannot be said for most other Bedrock Edition servers, or most other Minecraft Java Edition servers as well. I've never really found any game-breaking bugs during the time that I've played on the 
server, and it just seems like the developers put a lot of thought and effort into everything, and that's something that I'd really like to applaud the devs and just the entire team behind the server on, making it just a very seamless experience. I also like how Cubecraft has a very large variety of game modes. If you want PvP, they've got that in the form of so many game modes. But if you want a more chilled out experience, they have things like Skyblock. Or if you want an experience in the middle, they've got things like Minorware, which is their party games. All in all, there's really something for everyone on the server, which is good because it brings a diverse player base. One more thing that I really like about the server that isn't really that important, but it's still really fun, is the fact that you can craft in Sky Wars. I know I already went through this in my Sky Wars trapping video that I did on my second channel, which you can go check out if you would like to, but I just like how you can craft things and then they actually work. For example, you can craft signs and write on them, which is the thing that I've seen on pretty much no other public Minecraft server. <laughs> Alright, wait, let's see if we can write on signs. Subscribe. Oh, you can! <laughs> <laughs> And then there's also redstone mechanics that also work. You can get a door and a pressure plate and make that work, which can lead to some pretty good traps. What Cubecraft lacks in PvP as a result of their weird knockback and lag is almost kind of redeemed just by the fact that you can craft wacky things. And this makes Cubecraft the server that I go to if I just want to go and test out some weird things in Sky Wars against other players. This, once again, is a testament to how well the server works. If you're able to use signs and redstone without breaking the server, that shows how well put together it is. Alright, so there's one final thing that I want to talk about regarding Cubecraft, and that's their monetization structure. They have skins and cosmetics just like every other featured server on Minecraft Bedrock Edition has. They also have ranks like every other server has, except their ranks are a little bit different. You can buy ranks for specific game modes which give you voting options and cosmetics inside of those games, but from what I could find, there's no all-encompassing rank. You have to buy everything separately, and guess what? But each game mode's rank costs $10, so if you wanted to buy every available rank, you'd have to spend $60. Now, just by looking at how many people have reviewed each rank, it seems like Cubecraft has made quite a lot of money from this. Obviously, this monetization model works, but personally, I wouldn't spend $10 on a single game mode. However, if there was a rank that got me perks for every game mode, I might reconsider it. All in all, I really like Cubecraft as a server though. I think it is one of the best servers in Minecraft at the moment, and there is still plenty of room for growth on the server as well. I see plenty of potential on the server, and would definitely play it quite a lot more if the couple of things that I talked about in this video were changed just a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and before we end, I'd like to give a couple of shoutouts. First off, thank you so much to Insane Orbits for answering so many of my questions about Cubecraft that I had. It was super nice to have a Cubecraft player's perspective on the server, so that this video wasn't just biased towards the perspective of a Hive player. I'd also like to give a shout out to Pizzas, just because he was in the background gameplay of most of this. At this point, he's just becoming the guy that I play with whenever I review a server, so thank you for providing entertainment to my viewers. You can go subscribe to both of these people, they will be linked down in the description below. I'd also like to give a huge shout out to all of my channel members who support me financially for $4.99 a month. Their names are displayed on screen on all of my videos as a perk of the channel membership, and they also get some other cool perks as well. You can check those perks out by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button, or by clicking the link in the description. Again, big thank you to all of my members. I'd also like to give a big thank you to everyone who's ever watched my videos. If you want to see more content from me, just make sure to hit the like button, and subscribe if you enjoy my content and watch it frequently. You can also turn on notifications to know when I go live, or to be one of the first people to watch my videos when they first come out. I think that's going to be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.